Hey guys, so today I thought I would do something a little different um, than I normally do for my videos. So I get a lot of questions about my hair. I recently did an updated twist out routine. I'll link that below. And I also have a routine on how you can um, preserve your twist out. This style, in case you're wondering, this style is the results of my refresh and moisturize video, which I will uh, link below as well. This is the results. This is how it came out. I love it. It's big. It's curly it's defined just how I like my hair. So as the title says this video is going to be about 10 tips that I think are good to know and that help me when transitioning from relaxed to natural. So everybody's going to have their opinion on what they think is the most important tips, um, what helped them through their transitioning journey. But for me these are the things that I feel were most important to me that helped me through my transition. Um, and of course there's like so many more tips but these are the ones that I felt were most important to mention to you guys. So these tips are not really in any particular order. I'm going to just go through the 10 and then within each 10 I'm going to kind of point out a bunch of different things that I feel relate to that topic um, and hopefully this will be helpful to you guys. I know that when I was transitioning um, I was clueless. I had no idea and I just kind of had to you know watch different videos and do my own research to kind of figure out what to do. Um, quick backstory about my hair. I am 100% natural. I went from relaxed to natural and I long term transition. I was not into doing the big chop. It was like too much for me. That was a little bit too overwhelming. Um, I transitioned for about 25 and a half months. Um, this past January was a full year of transitioning for me and it's now what is it? It's like the end of February so been natural for a little bit over a year um but like i said so hopefully this video is not gonna be too long i'm gonna try to talk a little fast so it's not too long but if it is i mean it's one of those videos you just kind of want to sit down get a snack relax and maybe pick up some pointers that could help you in your journey first thing as i just mentioned is do your research like i said for me Doing research was super important. Um, I did my research and I'm looking at Alyssa to make sure that I mention everything. So that goes for like YouTube, for blogs, maybe some other people that you know um, who transition. Just do your research before you do anything. Do the research because there's a lot that you need to know when it comes to natural hair that maybe you just didn't know. I mean, personally, I feel like dealing with natural hair is a lot harder than relaxed hair. Um, it's so much more time consuming, costs so much more money, and there's so much more to know. But do your research, find out about products, do your research on products, find out what's available near you or if you have the option of ordering them online, find out the price range of stuff. Um, think of like a monthly budget, find out what the return policy is because you're not going to like or love everything that you try in your hair. And then another big part of the research is to decide whether you want a big chop or long term transition. So like I said for me I decided to long term transition but a lot of people decide to big chop it's just whatever works for you. But try to research and find out what comes along with either decision that you decide to make. Okay tip number two. No heat. No heat. Okay I know that can be really hard especially if you're accustomed to dealing with your hair straight relaxed or if you straighten your hair all the time but when I tell you no heat is one of the best things you can do for your hair if you're trying to restore the health. Now I understand that occasionally you may have to straighten your hair like when I was transitioning um, when I traveled I would straighten my hair just because natural hair is so unpredictable it's a lot to manage you just never know what you're gonna get so when I would travel I would just straighten my hair Ugh. As a side note, you guys, you might find a lot of lipstick on my teeth in this video because I don't ever wear color lipstick. You guys know I just stick to my nude glosses, but dang, wearing red lips. See, this is why I don't wear lipstick because it's just a lot of work. You got to make sure there's no lipstick on your teeth. Okay, lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, like I was saying, occasionally I would straighten my hair when I had to travel just because it's a lot easier, but if you can refrain from no flat irons, no blow dryers, no um, hooded dryers, like no heat whatsoever. That's the best thing you can do for your hair. Like it makes such a huge difference. On top of all the other things I'm going to tell you guys, no heat is everything for your hair. Okay, tip number three is be prepared for the long journey. Because when I tell y'all, this journey of going from relaxed to natural is no joke. It really is like a full-time commitment. It takes a lot of work, a lot of knowledge, a lot of patience. Um, 
patience is like the main thing lots and lots of patience because you're gonna have a ton of hair fails you're gonna have a ton of frustration let go of all the hair expectations that is such a big thing do not try to tell yourself that your hair is gonna look like someone else's do not try to figure out what your hair is gonna look like even if you were once natural years ago when you were a kid or whenever don't expect your hair to be the same right away because it takes time to transition from heat damage or from being chemically straightened for so long um so let go of expectation just kind of go with the flow let your hair do whatever it's going to do naturally um like i said don't compare your hair to anybody's um different products also that's important to know different products are going to work differently in everyone's hair which you know should be common sense but a lot of people might look at someone's hair look at the products they use and be like oh my hair is going to come out just like that and be disappointed if it doesn't or someone can use a product in their hair and it's a major fail but you use it in your hair and it looks amazing so just know that there's a lot of trial and error and try not to compare your hair like to a certain extent you want to com not compare your hair but you want to look to people if you're doing research or if you're looking at youtube videos you want to look to someone who has similar hair as yours so that you can kind of have an idea of what to do or what products might possibly work but everybody's hair is different and everything is going to work differently for everybody so just try not to do too much comparing okay tip number four is to be consistent be consistent especially with your base products and when i say base products um i mean like your pre-poo your sulfate free shampoo your deep conditioner your regular conditioner your oil um if you want to use a cleansing conditioner depending on how often you wash your hair make sure that you try to use products that are as natural as possible i mean it might not be possible for some people to use completely natural products like for everything but try to use as many natural products as you possibly can and try to stick to a consistent hair regimen so for me when i was transitioning i would wash my hair deep condition pre-poo all that kind of stuff every single week which i know could be a lot but at minimum at minimum do it at least every two weeks you don't want to go like a month or three weeks or too long without doing that weekly cleansing and deep conditioning especially deep conditioning and pre pooing and doing your oil treatments you don't want to go too long without doing that especially while you're transitioning because your hair is going to be going through such crazy phases it's going to get really dry you're going to have different textures going on and you want to make sure to consistently take care of that hair because the only way that it's going to grow period and grow healthy is if you're constantly taking care of it and constantly taking care of it doesn't mean always in your hair doing something different to it but that just means sticking to like a consistent regimen that you know is going to be good for your hair okay tip number five has to do with detangling your hair so oh my god i think the whole detangling process is one of the hardest steps of transitioning because for one you're dealing with a texture that you may not be accustomed to or haven't had to deal with in a long time but for two you're going to have your line of demarcation which is basically just where your natural hair is well your natural hair ends and your relaxed or um uh heat damaged hair begins so if you're just dealing with heat damage you're probably not going to have too much issues with the line of demarcation but I know from long-term transitioning that line of demarcation where your natural hair has grown out and your relaxed hair is still straight is so so fragile because not only are the ends of your hair already fragile because they're the oldest parts of your hair but that line of demarcation is just so prone to break it's just going to be so dry especially your um the new growth the new hair that's coming out it can be so dry and so rough and just so difficult to deal with like i remember going through that phase where that new hair was just extremely dry and it was so frustrating like honestly there were so many times where i was like what the heck am i doing i don't think i can handle this because i didn't actually get a relaxer until i was in like eighth grade and so i remember how my hair was i've always had like a ton of thick hair it always was really really long and i like begged my mom to get a relaxer because it was just too much to deal with so i'm just like oh my god can i deal with this i don't know it's a lot to handle this is why i got a relaxer in the first place but you just have to know that going natural is going to be amazing for your hair your hair is going to be so healthy you're going to just be able to do things that you couldn't do with your relaxed hair so don't give up don't i mean you're going to get frustrated but just keep pushing i mean for some people that's why they just big chop and just get it over with quickly because they don't want to have to deal with that whole process but like i said for me i'm so attached to my hair that i just wasn't ready to just chop it all off like that would have been like too much of a shock and too overwhelming for me so just try to push through the frustration but just be so so careful with your hair um, another thing to do is 
always do your hair in sections. Um, I think that just makes the whole detangling process a bit easier. I remember one time I just wanted to wash my hair so bad, I think it was like after braids or something, and I just like jumped straight in the shower, didn't detangle my hair, didn't section off, and I was like, oh my god, what the freak am I gonna do? Like, it just gets so tangled, it was so difficult to deal with, so don't do that, especially if you have a ton of thick hair, don't do that. Just take a few minutes, you know, before you go in the shower with your pre-poo in it or your conditioner, and just section off your hair and detangle or at least put product in each section just to kind of soften up the hair before you jump in the shower um not only does it help you clean your scalp a lot easier but it makes sure that you are properly putting product on all sections of the hair and that you're not overwhelmed with a whole head of hair in the shower you can just easily work with each section and not get too overwhelmed even now like i can just kind of jump in the shower with my hair out i don't have to worry about that anymore because i'm not um, transitioning but it's still easier to just do your hair in sections and just get more of like a thorough cleansing and detangling and all that stuff okay another thing under the detangling um, key point is to always make sure you're using a wide tooth comb or some type of detangling brush you don't want to use like a rat tail comb or a comb that is just like a fine tooth comb you always want to make sure that it's something that is specifically for detangling because if you don't do that you're just going to be ripping out your hair and that's just going to break up all your hair and then it's going to just mess up all the hard work that you've done so always make sure you use some type of detangling tool for your hair never detangle on dry hair ever you're just going to break your hair off it's going to just be coming out and breaking off and it's going to look a mess but also don't ever detangle your hair on soaking wet hair because your hair is extremely fragile when it's wet so you just want to either make sure your hair is damp with some type of detangling product in it or when you're in the shower and you have conditioner in your hair and then you're under the water detangling it on another tip for washing your hair is when you're washing your scalp, I think, and I used to do this too, a lot of people make the mistake of like washing your scalp with your nails. Don't ever do that because you're going to kind of cause damage to your scalp even if you think you're doing it gently. Always just use like this parts of your fingers and just kind of go through your scalp and kind of massage your scalp so that you can kind of break up all the product buildup. And then also massaging your scalp is going to help stimulate your hair growth. Okay guys, so tip number six is you want to do everything you can to keep your hair healthy. I know that sounds like, oh duh, obviously, but there's a lot of little steps that you want to do um, to make sure that your hair is healthy throughout the whole process and not just when you're completely transitioned. So the first thing is, which is what I did, from the day that you decide to start transitioning, start treating your hair like curly hair. So by that I mean that all the products that I use were all natural, they were products that were geared towards curly hair, and although I still had a whole head of relaxed hair, um, other than of course the new growth, I still treated that all as if I was dealing with all curly hair because curly hair is what was coming in from the roots obviously, and so I wanted to start getting in the habit of treating my hair like curly hair because the way the way you treat your hair and the things you do for straight relaxed hair is going to be different than curly hair like for example when my hair was relaxed i used minimal amount of products because my hair got weighed down super easy and i hated that oily stringy feeling but with my natural hair i use a lot of products and i moisturize a lot because it tends to get dried out more so because i knew that that curly hair was coming in i just made sure to always moisturize really well um, I would cut a few inches off every month like I said I didn't want to big chop and so for me cutting off gradually for one was a big deal because having relaxed hair like I was super picky about my hair like I would literally drive like 40 minutes away from my house to get my hair trimmed um, because anybody else would just like cut my hair and I really just wanted it to be trimmed and dusted and I hated when someone would actually like cut hella inches off my hair because I wanted to keep it long so being that I was transitioning and I was getting rid of that relaxed hair, I was okay cutting a little bit off every month as opposed to just cutting it off all at one time. Um, it was a lot shorter than I was accustomed to, but every month I just had a little bit cut off each time and, you know, until I was at the point to where I just was ready to get rid of all of it and I didn't really have that much left. So if you're a little overwhelmed with cutting it all off just gradually cut off every month every few months whatever makes you feel comfortable keep cutting until you feel like your natural hair is at a length to where once you cut off the relaxed hair you're still comfortable with it another thing is to make sure you always use 
hats or pillowcases or scarves bonnets all that stuff that are silk you don't want to ever use anything cotton or any kind of rough texture because that's just going to cause a lot of breakage in your hair it's going to dry your hair out it's going to mess up all your ends which are the weakest part of your hair and those are going to be the first to break um, make sure everything is silk because it's going to retain the moisture in your hair it's going to keep it soft it's going to prevent it from breaking especially with the pillowcases that's not only good for your hair but it's good for your face too and minimizing the amount of wrinkles that occur if you use just like a regular cotton pillowcase. Another thing is to make sure that you are spritzing and moisturizing in between washes. So say you wash your hair this week and you're not going to wash again for like another week or two weeks, whatever your schedule is. Don't just think that okay on wash day you're going to put all these products in your hair and that's it. No, throughout the week, maybe like you know, if you're washing it once a week, maybe once throughout that week, you want to make sure that you oil your scalp, put some oil throughout your ends, throughout all of your hair. And then another thing that I always do, I did and I still do, is to have a water mixture, which mine is always just aloe vera juice, filtered water, um, any kind of oil, and then maybe sometimes a little bit of glycerin. That's kind of like something I use every once in a while, but that spritz, and not in like a, a streaming water bottle, but like a spritz bottle, and every night I just spritz my hair, whether it's in twists or out or whatever, I just spritz my hair just to put in a little bit of the moisture that might have, that my hair might have lost um, throughout the day. Another thing is back to um, drying your hair. So the best thing to use in your hair is to use an old t-shirt, or if you don't want to use an old t-shirt, they do have, um, like those towels that are made out of t-shirts. So instead of using an actual old t-shirt on your hair, they have the stuff to dry your hair that's made out of t-shirt material. Um, but an old t-shirt from anybody is perfect. It's long enough if your hair is long. It's easy to just kind of wrap up and absorb the moisture in your hair. It's not going to dry your hair out, but it's going to take out enough of that water for you to be able to properly style your hair and not dry it out or get any kind of breakage. Um, another thing about drying your hair is try to air dry your hair as much as possible because that goes along with the no heat um, rule that is so important. I always, always, always air dry my hair. Even when I was relaxed, I always air dried my hair. Um, but always air dry your hair. I mean, if you're in a rush or if you've been air drying your hair for hours and it's still not dry, you may have to sit under a hooded dryer or use a diffuser. Um, but just make sure you give yourself enough time to be able to wash and style your hair and then, um, let it dry you know what i mean like don't don't do it like right before you go to bed because then you don't want to sleep on wet hair and not only isn't it going to dry but you're going to kind of mess up whatever style you have going on since it's wet okay tip number seven try to find a line of styling products that works good with your hair so i mean that's basically just going to take trial and error like i have only recently this past year um, found some lines of products that I feel work really great with my hair and when I say I have tried so many things like over my hair journey like I said I transitioned for 25 and a half months throughout that time I don't even know how many different hair products I tried it's ridiculous I'm a product junkie so I love trying new products but it is going to be so much trial and error sometimes you're going to use something and you're going to love the results sometimes you're going to use something and the results are going to be awful it's going to be a total fail um and that's just part of the process and it's kind of depressing when you put all this work into your hair and it doesn't work but you know what there's that's the only way you're going to find out what products works best in your hair is to just constantly try products and so that's why i think i mentioned in one of my earlier steps is to try to create a monthly budget for products and try to find a place that has a great return policy and do your research on a product so before you even buy a product do your research on it, see what people are saying, but so don't take that as like the end all be all. Because like I said, everyone's hair is going to react differently to the products. You have to find stuff that is specific to your hair needs. So do the research, um, make sure that you can return the products if they don't work out because you don't want to keep a product that you're never going to use. And make sure that the products you're using are specific to your hair needs. So if your hair requires a lot of moisture, then find something that's super moisturizing. If your hair needs something that's a bit lighter because you have, you have um, your hair is not as thick, then use something that is for lighter hair. Use something that's for thicker hair. Use something that's for super curly or coily. Whatever your hair is like, try to find products that are specific to your hair needs. Tip number eight is experiment with your hair. So don't experiment to the extent of you're doing something different to your hair every other day. When I say experiment, I mean this is the perfect time to try different protective styles. So 
During that transition, because your hair is two different textures, it's going to be very, I mean, everybody has a different experience, but most likely your hair is going to be very difficult to deal with. It's going to be very frustrating. You know, you might see a lot of hair loss if you're not taking care of it properly. So try different protective styles like um, braids or twists or faux locks or like a twisted up do or a braided up do. There's so many different styles, crochet braids or if you're into like wigs or whatever the case may be. Protective styling basically just is a style that is going to protect your hair. So it's going to be something that is going to be low manipulation, it's not going to cause a lot of tension on your hairline or your scalp, and it's going to put you in a position to where you don't have to do your hair every day. So if you can get a protective style and maybe keep it in for like a month, you know, two months, it's depending on what style you get and how it lasts. When I did protective styling, um, I would be like stretching to a month because after a few weeks I'm like ready to take it out because you can't really wash your hair properly with braids or twist in it as you would if your hair is out. So someone who's used to washing their hair every week, um, washing my hair and not really kind of getting in there was a little frustrating. So the longest I would leave my style in is for a month which I mean protective styling can be expensive unless you know how to do it yourself and so you might think okay you want to leave it in for a longer month that's fine. Um, but for me, a month was more than enough time. And also, too, you don't want to leave it in too long because you do want to give your hair a break, but you don't want to not be able to get to your actual real hair and properly take care of it. So if you have, like, twists or braids, your hair is still in there. So you still want to moisturize. You still want to put oil on your scalp. You want to, you don't want to do too much because, for one, you don't want the protective style to slip out and you don't want to get a lot of buildup on your scalp but you still want to make sure to keep your scalp and whatever hair is out moisturized. Another thing about experimenting with your hair is to be open-minded. So there's styles that I do that obviously I didn't do when my hair was straight that I never thought I'd wear with my hair but because your hair is so versatile now that you're natural or because you are dealing with two different textures it's the time to just try something new try something different like i never ever thought that i would be someone who would want to have my hair natural because for so long i wanted it relaxed and i was one of those people who loved my hair to be like bone straight i wore it parted down the middle super duper long and bone straight and now it's like i don't feel like myself if my hair is not like big and curly and like this like when i wear my hair straight i don't feel like myself anymore which is crazy because i wore my hair straight for so long but like i said be open-minded you can try a twist out which is what i have in right now you can try a braid out um when i was transitioning i could never do a twist out which was so frustrating because my ends were so straight so i would just put a perm rod on the end but i would always just do um cornrows and then take it out and have a braid out and since i've been natural all i ever do is twist outs because it's so easy i love the results and it's something that i always wanted to do while i was transitioning so to say all that like i said just experiment try new styles i mean it's not permanent it's only temporary it's just to give your hair a break so try something new so tip number nine is to pay close attention to your scalp and your ends of course you want to maintain the health of your entire hair right but your scalp is where that new growth is coming in it's where it's going to be super dry um it's going to be a totally different texture so you want to really really get that moisture in there and make sure that it's not breaking and it's growing and healthy and then your ends that's the oldest part of your hair so that's the first part that's going to break um if your hair starts breaking off so just make sure to put extra attention on those parts um massage your scalp massaging your scalp is going to not only get those products in there, but it's also going to simulate a lot of growth. When you are just like chilling, watching TV, when you're styling your hair, when you're washing your hair, always take a couple minutes, I mean two, three minutes or so, just to massage your scalp and make sure that the hair growth is being stimulated. Okay, my last tip, tip number 10, is don't give up. I kind of touched on this already before, but I just want to reiterate it again. Don't give up. Y'all, I understand this is like, it's a full-time commitment. It's like a full-time job having natural hair. And the transitioning journey can be really, really hard. And a lot of people give up and they try again and they give up and they try again. And that's understandable, but that's why I say do your research, like really, really do extensive research into what it takes to go natural, whether it's, you know, doing the big chop or long term transitioning. Do your research so that you know what to expect, um, because it takes a lot of work. Honestly, I feel like it's more expensive than when I had relaxed hair. It's a lot of trial and error. You never really know what is going to 
happen with your hair like you never know how your style is going to turn out i mean you could do it today and it turns out great and then you could do it tomorrow and it's like a big mess um you never really know how it's going to turn out especially if you're experimenting with like flexi rods and perm rods like i had so many times when i did my hair and it didn't come out the way i expected but what are you going to do? It's trial and error. You just got to figure out what works for you. And eventually you will. I mean, it's going to be a lot of frustration. Like I said, you need a ton of patience. But eventually, if you keep trying and you're committed and you take the best possible care of your hair, you're going to find styles that work for you. Another thing is make sure you're doing this for yourself. Don't do it because it's trendy. Don't do it because someone makes you feel like, oh, you got to go natural. You're this or that. If you don't go natural, do it because you want to do it. Um... There's people in my life who made jokes and who didn't think that I should go natural, but I don't really care because the hair is on my head. I got to look at myself every day and I want to go natural for my hair. I'd rather go natural and have a head full of hair than to, you know, keep relaxing my hair. And at the end of the day, I don't have any hair because like I said, I've always had a lot of thick, long hair. And when I was relaxed, I only relaxed my hair at most twice a year. I didn't relax a lot. I only um, put heat on my hair twice a month. But after so many years of doing that, it takes a toll on your hair. And I just felt like my hair just wasn't really growing the way that it used to. I was having a lot of breakage. It just wasn't the same. Like to someone I was looking at my hair, they thought, oh, your hair looks great. It looks super healthy. But because I know how my hair is really supposed to be, I could tell that my hair it was just taking a toll and the older you get you know as you get older your hair is not going to be the same as it was when you're younger so maybe you used to be able to put a lot of heat on your hair or get relaxers but eventually like it just like i said it takes a toll on your hair just do it for you do it for you know that it's a commitment know that it's a lot of work um do your research and just have fun you know like i said going natural is the best decision i have ever made because people act too like if you go natural that you can't straighten your hair if you want to straighten your hair you can still straighten your hair i mean it's best not to put heat on it too often but if you want to straighten every once in a while you can have straight hair you can have curly hair you can have wavy hair you can have whatever kind of hair you want natural hair is so versatile it doesn't limit you to any specific style when you relax your hair, I mean, that's awesome. It's great. I did it. I loved it for years. Um, But it's just nothing like natural hair. This is the hair that God gave you. This is the hair that you were intended to have. So embrace it and love it and just kind of roll with it. And it's amazing. So these are all my tips, my top 10 tips for transitioning from relaxed to natural or even if you're transitioning from heat damage. Um, All these tips are still super helpful, but long-term transitioning is what i did and i just kind of want to help out anybody else that was also going through the transitioning journey um i will link all related videos down below that i mentioned like i said i have video of like staple products or my um twist out routine my nighttime routine i'll make sure i link all that below if you guys have any tips for anybody that might be watching this and is going through that transitioning journey right now, definitely share your tips. Um, I know I was always so open to other people's advice. I honestly didn't have anybody around me that was going natural, but I just watched a ton of YouTube videos. I read a lot of blogs, trial and error. You know, after a while, you just kind of figure it out. So hopefully some of these tips that I have in here was helpful to somebody, even if it's just one. Hopefully it helped you guys out. Um, like I said, everybody has their own specifics on what's most important. But for me, these are the points that stood out when I was thinking about my transitioning journey. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you are subscribed so you know when I post a new video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Make sure you're following me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at allmellows2. And I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye.